Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. We have the full throttle launch. Brakes are crazy, man. What brakes? Blows every electric thing out of the <laughs> world. But they should actually make a, you know, okay, that's NSFW. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm riding this. This is the Kawasaki Ninja ZX Turn R. Oh my God, look at the excitement because this is a super bike and look at it. It looks very much inspired by the Ninja H2 at the front with this air intake which will definitely remind you of the H2 but this is actually a ram air intake which helps in better breathing and increases the power by 10 yeah 10 horsepower more thanks to this at higher speeds but we'll talk about the power numbers later LED lights with a projector as well yeah LED projectors you see these are actually air intakes for aerodynamics not for the engine okay this actually improves the downforce by 17 percent at higher speeds that's amazing as well yeah look at that and the lights are really bright and nice and it's very sharp at the front in fact the front fairing is such that it has been designed to ensure wind protection with the windscreen of course which is now a little taller as well and this is the drl of this motorcycle it says kawasaki racing team in this krt color it looks absolutely mind-bogglingly phenomenal it says zx10 our ninja kawasaki right there the ground clearance is actually apt enough and you've got the best brake system here from brembo m50 amazing twin disc of course However, the suspension is super advanced, it comes from Showa and it's adjustable on both the sides for both, I mean for everything, damping, compression, rebound, preload, everything, it is actually adjustable, yeah, that's mind-blowing, but you know what, you can independently do it for both the left as well as the right fork, why would you do that, depending on the track you are, which has more right curves or more left ones, alright, now from the front, it is very different from the side, it looks more or less the same as before, but look at the headers, okay, titanium alloys, become slightly blue right now but they look mind-blowing very nicely concealed motorcycle quality levels are fantastic nothing vibrates as such and of course the heart of the matter an inline four-cylinder engine with an exhaust which looks a bit too ordinary for such a kind of a motorcycle okay it gets this sort of a chrome finish of course you get a reflector on the side but why would you need it when you're flying past so people can see from the side that there's just a rocket which has disappeared 21 liter fuel tank capacity says kawasaki racing team and Everything on this bike looks super sporty, super nice. In fact, the mirrors, they get the indicators here and you can fold them if you so wish. I don't like the number plate placement, but I'm just going to stick the number plate here if I buy this motorcycle, of course. And the seat, well, you arrive alone here because just for the rider. Actually, the seat is quite hard, but it has been designed so that you don't fly when you accelerate hard because it kind of supports you here. Sorry, pillion rider, this one is not for you. Again wind flows or rather air flows from here for better aerodynamic efficiency so that's kind of revised on this motorcycle and you get a tank guard as well but you know what kawasaki has done it has actually raised the foot pegs by 5 mm for better cornering clearance but that also results in a very weird riding position okay the clip on handlebars actually move forward by 10 mm so that you crouch even further so riding position is super duper dedicated and you know what this is kind of exposed the wires obviously you get braided lines but it's exposed now this is super duper awesome you know why the brake lever is obviously adjustable all right okay it's adjustable but the clutch lever is not adjustable that's kind of weird and awkward and the master cylinder is placed here with you know this is to release the pressure and whatever but the good thing here is that this actually serves a purpose i'll tell you in a bit coming to the rear of this motorcycle it i mean it looks the same the same sort of tail light uh, LED indicators, of course, massive rear tire, but you see it's a bit worn out, so we can't really go full beans today. And obviously we're on the road, so we can't go full beans. We'll go to the track maybe someday. And uh, you get three spoke alloy wheels. Again, Nissan brake calipers at the rear, but you know what, the disc might appear small. It is still massive to stop this motorcycle in no time at all. Aluminium swing arm, all the best bits which you would expect from motorcycle of this class. 190 section rear tire, 120 section front, and oh my goodness what a beautiful looking machine anyways now let's come to the complex part of things okay this is a 4.3 inch tft instrument cluster straight away let me tell you it is very similar to what we have seen on almost every kawasaki motorcycle above 650 cc okay now you can see i can browse through a lot of parameters that's the odometer trip a trip b lean angle and it tells you max lean on both the sides that's cool okay i use this button to operate that the lower button is for the lower data it's telling me the average fuel economy it has a uh, 21 liter tank but right now it has 12.9 liters in terms of how much fuel is left it tells me the battery voltage as well 
but it does not yeah that's shocking it does not get a fuel gauge <laughs> yeah that's kind of weird but it tells you digitally 12.9 liters that's how much amount of fuel is there in the motorcycle has the engine temperature engine temperature clock and there's a speedometer tachometer gear position indicator and which mode you are in and all the telltale lights everywhere however this is for kawasaki quick shifter it's in kqs but you know what it's easy to browse you use this button and you can browse to all the parameters and the up one for the same now this button is check this out okay this is for throttle it's showing how much throttle is being applied yeah that's right how much throttle is being applied it shows you and if i switch it it shows how much brake is being applied so yeah that is also quite cool if you watch formula 1 well this is the aws of a motorcycle okay aws data which was powered by aws in formula 1 now this button is actually to change the color of the cluster yeah it's also to select something yeah that is cool i think the white one looks better for sure it also gets cruise control which is kind of a first for a leader class motorcycle from kawasaki this is for the indicator the horn <laughs> the horn is also nice this is the hazard light switch which is obviously necessary and uh, what is this no this is not monitoring you that is kind of weird it also gets the kawasaki river logo right here steering damper as well you see it's adjustable for preload the suspension on this motorcycle is really very advanced you can adjust it for multiple parameters if you so wish and you know what this is the select mode for what you can actually go inside and decide what you want to change there's so many parameters you can change like vehicle settings clock shift light what not that is also cool so you know another very nice thing is when you turn on the motorcycle it says kawasaki right there and then it shows the river logo which was only there on kawasaki supercharged machines keep this button pressed and then you can change the modes okay there are three riding modes we'll talk about that later when you're riding this motorcycle so you can just keep this button pressed to change the mode meanwhile the lower button is actually there you keep it pressed it is again for changing the riding modes and then you can customize this as well for which you have to actually get into rider 1 2 3 4 and then you press the select button yeah there you get into rider 1 2 3 4 and you can decide how much power and how, what level of traction control you want that's also very simple actually kawasaki has made it little complex you need a little practice to get used to all this let's do one thing let's turn on the motorcycle you don't need to press the clutch you just press it like this and there the motorcycle rose to life you can see the indicators you can see the lights super duper bright actually the switch for the lights it's here itself so here you can see full beam yep and the rear light well you can see the indicator in the rear light they could have actually changed the rear light to make it a little different let's rev the motor listen to this all right let's do one thing let's start riding all right all set to go let's turn on the motorcycle there it rose to life into first gear and off we go so yes right now we are in sport mode it's got five riding modes or something of that sort yeah five no not five riding modes it's got three riding modes actually rain road and sport we are on sport and there are four customizable rider modes as well where you can customize the power as well as the traction control system and there are five levels for the traction control it's the least intrusive at one and most intrusive at five zero it's turned off it's suicide mode it's actually flip mode if you are a olympic athlete who is into doing stunts definitely you will like that mode as well uh, and uh, you know what uh, actually the thing is that when you are on sport which we are in right now the traction control level is at 2 meanwhile traction control level goes to 3 in road mode and 5 the most intrusive in rain mode in fact power also cuts in rain mode so you know there are three power levels also high is the full bounty then there is medium which is 80% power and there is low which is like 60% of power you honestly need only 60% of power now you know what you need balls of steel to ride this motorcycle because it's absolutely bonkers brakes are absolutely mind bogglingly stunning all right we are into first gear we are going to launch right now it has got launch control as well but forget that for a bit here we go now i have to hold on for dear life before opening a full throttle okay here we open the full throttle look at it go it's actually 80% throttle <laughs> this is madness it hit 158 km per hour in first gear and kawasaki says they have actually reduced the gearing of the motorcycle what the f how have they done it they made changes to the rear sprocket to take down to make uh, you know the gearing shorter but what the f it's doing 158 in first gear the old bike used to do 156 km per hour in first gear and you know what it took me 15 attempts to hit the red line here i did it in first attempt so yes although i'm older i am still having both of them I'm kidding I don't. <laughs> okay because you need two sets of balls for this bike. One is for the guts and the other is because the tank hits your balls every time you get hard onto the throttle because the riding position is obnoxiously stupid. It's like I'm sitting on a Indian seat, Indian pot or uh, pooping right now. 
There's so much grunt. Kawasaki has made so many improvements on this motorcycle. First and foremost, the engine is the same 999cc motor. It's an inline four motor. Very smooth, very refined, and very punchy as well. Very high revving too. A lot of varies here, but you get the gist. This bike is absolute bonkers. Riding in the city, no problem at all because, yeah, you heard that right. This motorcycle has great heat dissipation. You don't really feel any heat on your legs as such. So that's also very well managed. It's not very wide as such a motorcycle. So, you know, browsing through traffic like this, no problem at all. You just keep an eye on the mirrors because the mirrors are wide. It's very tractable. You can actually ride it in third gear as well because of the change in gearing. But I honestly don't feel the change in gearing. I'm sorry about that. Okay, here, going through traffic, not a problem. Just keep a tap on the throttle because a post 5000 RPM, it wakes up like a mad machine and absolutely catapults ahead like nobody's business in fact let me tell you something the earlier bike did not have such a great mid-range this has a stupendous mid-range as well earlier bike used to get alive at 8000 rpm this gets alive in 5000 rpm only and then before you know it <laughs> i don't think there is any sense of driving in sport mode or on full power because there's just too much grind okay it's got the imu sensor which results in the traction control modes as well but honestly there is absolute bonkers performance from this bike you can't put the power down and when you do put the power down you end up like this <laughs> front end lifts a bit okay this is a suicide machine that is a level of grunt on offer there is a decent amount of wind blast as well although the ride is on the stiff side and this thing moves as well on bad roads which is kind of disappointing but that's kind of expected from this motorcycle which produces 203 horsepower now that 203 horsepower comes in at of obnoxious 13,400 RPM. Yeah, that is too high. And an additional 10 horsepower at high speed thanks to the RAM air intake. The result is 213 horsepower. So, sorry, 211 horsepower or 201 horsepower. Actually, 203 PS. Or my God, what is wrong with you? This is a bike or a rocket. What are you doing, bike? <laughs> Throttle response is fantastic. Low end grunt could have been slightly better, but then you are half the time so scared of putting the power down. Because every time you get on the throttle, you're like, mm, where is it going? It's just gone. It is gone. It's obnoxious. Stock output, 114.9 Newton meters at a rather very high 11,200 RPM. So everything is in the top end of the rim range, resulting in you really need balls of steel to move this bike hard and fast. Riding position, I don't like it at all. Okay, here we go. Check this out, okay? I'm gonna get on the throttle harder. Front end, where do you go? Oh my goodness, that's a shift light blinking. Absolutely bonkers sort of performance. Quick shifter works at almost every given speed. Up and down, both of them. Great electronic package. Everything on this bike is absolutely about speed, hardcoreness. Ride is very stiff. The handling is super duper awesome. It really jinks into corners without much effort, but the tires are a little roasted right now so you really can't appreciate the ride uh, sorry you can't really appreciate the handling to complete uh, you know completely i mean <laughs> i'm lost for words by riding this bike that is the craziness it has to offer oh, i need to breathe and then when you come on bad roads <laughs> everything moves the ride quality is i would say acceptable but still it is on the harder side and the clutch is also obnoxiously heavy the good thing is the clutch might be heavy but at least the gearbox is super smooth shifting quick shifter really helps but all these technologies are all about a race track yeah, you don't ride this bike on the road just doesn't make sense at all okay it's a very attractively priced motorcycle but what do i do with an attractively priced motorcycle when i cannot ride it at all in spite of buying more balls of steel also you still can ride this bike because this is just way too much power for the road absolutely bonkers power delivery and there's no fuel tank as well they have given this cool throttle uh, you know showing how much throttle you're applying or i can actually change that to how much brake i'm applying you can see that but there is no fuel meter that is like next level confusion happening there it says low fuel already mileage between 12 to 18 kilometers per liter and there we go so the thing is i was saying the fuel efficiency of this motorcycle should be between 12 to 18 kilometers per liter depending on your riding style yeah, lean angle sensor so cool <laughs> this bike is all about mental performance zero to 100 kilometers per hour depends on your balls but should go from 0 to 100 in around 2.5 seconds with launch control which is again a little complex to activate and you know what in a sport mode now nah, it's a little choppy on off throttle okay this steering damper comes in great use now you see a little twitch at higher speeds as you get into the throttle but this one really stabilizes the bike in quick time as well 
High speed stability is fabulous. Everything of this bike is nice. I can feel some amount of heat on my legs right now, on my feet. But overall heat dissipation is also very good. So Kawasaki has just made this bike even better, better, better. In fact, it's one of the most attractively priced bikes. 18.5 lakhs, 5-3 lakh rupees on road Mumbai. Attractively priced, liter class motorcycles, of course. But honestly, this is just... One is okay, actually. This is just too much power than what you can ever use. And if you buy this bike, just use it on low power setting at all. I'm not even going into third gear. I'll tell you what. First gear, almost 158 km per hour. Second gear, this bike will easily cross 200. Third gear, 250. Fourth, fifth, sixth are absolutely useless. Why would I even need them? For what? To kill myself? Absolutely not. I'm not going in those gears. Yeah, it all depends on how much throttle you open. Now, see, in third gear, I'm riding. Open the throttle there. I have to cut throttle all the time because it's just accelerating like mad. Red light at 14,000 RPM is goose bumps. Absolute goose bumps. And of course, so much wind which you can feel. This is a motorcycle for the track period. You don't ride this bike anywhere else. It is purely for the track. And on the track, obviously, it's a different ball game altogether. The performance of the bike is completely reliant on your guts, of course. Look at the way it stops. Super sure-footed into first gear here full bananas i'm almost falling off the motorcycle half the time that's actually the shift light yeah this is the shift light if i was on a racetrack i would have done 300 kilometers per hour without any doubt because it easily, easily hits to 99 kilometers per hour what a machine what a fantastic motorcycle absolutely bonkers not very practical taking a u-turn pain in the ass because my uh, knee is almost touching my elbow so that is a bit of a problem so when you're taking the you uh, taking a u-turn both of them collide as well and that never really happens even when i'm doing burpees so that's kind of weird so riding position is not the best i mean forget being best it's far from being good either but hey that's not a complaint i should be making this is a sports bike that's expected i'm sitting in a very weird position that's also fine but performance really makes you forget everything so as i see it this kawasaki zx 10 are absolutely ballistic missile but just too powerful for the road kawasaki do us a favor chuck this bike and can you please 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 launch the zx 25r in india because that's the kind of motorcycle i think i can actually use on a daily basis and still have my fun on a weekend and on that disappointment it's time for me to chicken out park this motorcycle and walk home because i honestly cannot deal with the crazy amount of grunt it has to offer it's just obnoxiously powerful obnoxious is actually a small word here super duper powerful what a machine but not for the faint-hearted and i think age is catching up on me and that's the reason why i've decided okay the bike does not want me to leave it park it here turn it off keep the hazard lights on and walk home as well bye kawasaki i love you but i love myself more so i'll just rather walk home alone bye bye I walk alone.